Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Cloaks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about all things Gen Con, our nationals coming up, as well as a little bit of Mexico's nationals. That was this past weekend. And some Hero Cloaks news, like always. This is episode 476. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero Clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. They're going to be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sale products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to get Hero Clicks straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIAL H10 for 10% off your order over there. Not available for Iconics or Play Dome Kits, I believe. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Burrs. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, yeah, you know, another week, another another half week. I won't, I won't be working all the all five days this week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We get a we get a short week this week, and why is that? Ooh, because we're gonna be on the road, <laughs> on the road again. Can't wait to get yeah, back we're on the road uh, again. hitting the oil oil road, hitting the pavement, and. Driving our way down to Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, pretty fun we'll, time. We'll Gen be Con there this weekend. Thursday night. Um, yep, and then uh, more so like at Gen Con Friday. <laughs> I don't know if we'll. Yeah, how much we'll be there Thursday? I know it's a ten-hour drive for us, so we'll get there Thursday ish, like half day, probably like five six p.m. So we might do right. some conventioning. But, Stop in, pick up yeah. the old badge if we can, and look yeah. get a little look-see, a little lay of the land type deal. Yeah, but if any of you listeners are uh, going to be at yeah. Gen Con, uh, by the time you hear this, we, um, I mean, obviously, hopefully you already locked in your tickets if you're planning on going by the time you hear this. But uh, yeah, if anyone's right. going to be there and they want to meet up or hang out or whatever, uh, send us a message over on Facebook or wherever. And let us know that you're going to be there and like what you're doing and stuff like that. Obviously, we'll be hanging around the HeroClix booth the majority of the time, uh, but we'll get more into that later. But yeah, I, I would like to meet up with a few people. That'd be kind of fun. It'd be pretty fun. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be a grand old time. Might have a you know, little chit chat. We'll hang out. You know, if you just see us, don't be afraid to be like, "Hey, yo, what's up, Calder Simeon." How you guys doing? You know, I watch your videos, listen to podcasts, whatever. We love we love talk to people. Like we love to get the lay of the land. Everybody's hero clicks community is different. We'd love to hear about yours. You know, everybody's hero clicks experience is different. We'd love to hear about yours. I just love talking about hero clicks and comic books with people. So yeah, if you see us, stop by, say hi, be like, yo, what's up? What's good? You know, I'd love to say we could pick up a battle royal or something, but those are like all sold out, and I didn't register for any. Yeah, for any. I don't know if those so. will be available. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. If you, pretty do tough. Want, if you do want to face off against me and Calder, you'll have to sign up for the Friday X Men organized uh, That's summer right. OP uh, OP kit, kit thing. thing yes. Yeah, so, X Men slop. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to play in that because we didn't get to I play in too. any of those yeah. that worlds last year. So I'm pumped. No, I saw. It's been, I don't, was it last, literally a year ago, last summer, where these were kicking off, and I managed to go yeah. to exactly one, and then I've had to slowly watch as people were able to, like, not only pick up the grand prize, which I, I don't have, like, any grand envisioning of myself winning the grand prize, but they were, like, able to pick up the prizings, they were able to get, like, the participation prizings, and then also just, like, the boosters and the contents of said boosters, and I got one. Yep. And yep. Yeah. A single booster. Yay. Yeah. So I'm I'm very yeah. excited. I was so excited I actually signed up for Friday and Saturday for the Oh yeah. nice. Oh nice. I don't know. Do you want to just kinda skip everything and just keep the the ball rolling on Gen Con here, Sim? Yeah. Uh so sure. let's just pop off on Gen Con. So as of right now, 
they are essentially as far as hero clicks goes they are essentially completely sold out friday except for the um like we just said the uh, x-men x of swords storyline organized play kit they have a bunch of learn to play events i assume if you're listening to this you already kind of know how to play probably more so than like what these would be that is a two dollar entry so i assume you walk away with something i don't know what that is but yeah friday is the first time so. where like an actual quote-unquote event that is available still pops off and that is at 1 p.m that's the X-Men X of Swords organized play kit. The next time something pops off that isn't a learn to play is also Saturday at 1, the X-Men X of Swords online or storyline organized play kit. Uh, everything in between that is still available or at least showing available is learn to plays. Um, and then Saturday, one hour later at 2 p.m. is the Silver Age tournament. And then if you're just spectating, the national championship is going to kick off at, on Saturday at 2 p.m., so that'll be exciting as well. Uh, that is going to conclude some point at the night because Saturday at 5 p.m., they say the U.S. national championship finals. So the first one is basically the Swiss rounds, and then the finals are going to kick off at 5 p.m., and it's going to be essentially like the top players from like the the whatever the the qualifiers lead into the actual tournament and then it's single elimination and that leads into the final so we should have a national champion at i don't know about six sometime saturday Saturday night um this is eastern daylight time uh and then yeah after that it's learn to play and then silver age on sunday at 10 a.m and then it's all learn to plays after that. Everything else is sold out. Heroclix is donezo for the most part. If you uh, haven't gotten your tickets, then yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, if you're interested in WizKids like Onslaught stuff, they've got a ton of stuff that's still completely open. Uh, they have not just demos that are free, but they also have tournament qualifiers that are open. Right now, there's not a ton of people that are signed up, so I don't know how exactly they're going to do it, but if you sign up for a qualifier right now, I believe that you'll get straight into the like, their nationals. Um, more demos, and then they have the To the Death, which is where you go head-to-head, get exclusive content with a special scenario, and uh, yeah, I think it's like key keep what you kill i think is like how they kind of phrased that but that's all of that is completely open is so that what if, it is yeah i i think so it's similar to their um what was it last year the oh why can i i want to call it apocalypse dragon because that's the mage knight name for it but it's the uh the like the six-headed thing dragon thing um but they oh, yeah team it. Tiamat, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, the that was their keep what you kill the last time, where if you could play your, like, D&D team against it, you could keep that if you killed it or whatever. Um, very cool. I don't know if they have any Tiamats that are getting broke out. I assume not, because this is an Onslaught specific that I'm looking at. But, yeah, there's a ton of that available if you aren't playing in Hero Clicks. But, yeah, as I said, for the most part... Heroclix is pretty much sold out. Uh, D and or not D and D, um, Battle Royals sold out way faster than anything else, which real sad to me. I was going to do a few mini rants about how much I hate Gen Con's thing. I understand that if people are very organized and whatever, and they want to detail out their entire trip and their entire day before they go to something, they can do that. Um, but that's not me. I'm like, a, oh, is there free time for a BR? Oh, sure. Maybe my yeah. lunch ran a little long. Okay, well, I guess I'll just not make it. But, you know, like, oh, I'll just eat super fast. I'll jump in a BR. You know, like three guys are like, yo, man, we're looking for a fourth. You know, just jump in quick. Yeah. Whatever but happened to like three people oh. waiting for a fourth. And then you just you're like, oh, yeah, sure. I've got like 50 minutes. Yeah. And then it kicks like, off. Okay, I'll jump in there. That's Whatever great. Happened. That's magic. That's beautiful. 
the the pre-register for everything i i hate it i can't stand it i personally not a fan no good very icky uh as the kids would say it just it sucks i hate pre-registering for stuff because it's just it's just the worst i want some pickup games that's fun that's fun to me but these board gamers in indianapolis these gen con folks think they're in charge (laughs) they're they're stomping on our fun i tell you what but anyways Mini rants aside, uh, yeah, we're we're not neither of us are playing in any battle royales unless it somehow no. works. I don't know. I doubt it. I guess they're all and apparently sold out. None um, of us are playing in any. Well, yeah, I think uh, like throughout the weekend, I'll check and see if like there's any quote unquote no. like drops or something what? from BRs. What what are we registered for, Simeon? What can the the listeners find us at? I guess what are you registered for? What will they so, be able to? We just said both. Yeah, go um, ahead. Friday and Saturday at 1 p.m., I will be in the X-Men organized uh, OP kit set. So it'll be uh, all three months you get, I think it's set up so it's a booster a day, or quote-unquote not booster a day. It's a booster per round or something around those lines. So you play with like the first booster that you pulled and the second and then the third, and you play for the grand prize of each quote-unquote month all in like one go so it's like all three months of the organized play how it would have been but in one single sitting um and yeah then you so you get the participation prizing you get the three boosters you get a chance at like the you know apoc genesis um and then all of the other like the pogger pog colossal and all that stuff which i'm really excited for i obviously i'd love to get my hands on an apoc genesis for not like second hand prices, uh, third yeah. party prices, whatever. It'd be really nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're not as expensive as they were, but they're still yeah. not cheap. <laughs> no, they're, they're not the 350 that they started off as, but they're still going to be around for a while, I'm guessing. And then there's also every single one of those boosters had, well, not every single one, but every single one has a chance for having a tarot card that I only opened one booster of and didn't I, get a tarot I thought card. They in. all did come with a tarot card because the might. whole point was that they each come with one and then you get one for the table and that makes a little deck. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's, Isn't that wasn't that their whole deal? It's quite possible. I I only okay. played in like one week, so I didn't get like the full explanation because I I was only there partially. But I I can't wait to like actually play. It's basically I'm gonna play back to back sealed days and. Uh, that's my favorite way to play anyhow. So that's what I'll be doing. They both crack off at one. And as of right now, all three, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, are all still available. So if anyone wants to buy into those instead of the other tournaments, they're all still available. I know most competitive players probably have all the junk that they need from those sets. But still, I think it's a really cool option. It's a ton of fun. It looks like a ton of fun. and. I do hope soon that we can start doing like the Royal Flush Gang stuff whenever that was supposed to come out because that right. would be really cool because I'm just itching to play like a DC organized play hasn't been a thing since like I'm gonna, I want to say War of Light we might have had some yeah 15th anniversary something like that like, like that that was just here play uh, Wonder Woman. Elseworlds <laughs> and get these bystanders yeah, yeah like man, we haven't had it in so long. It's been like Days of Future Past or the Fantastic Four stuff or this X-Men stuff or like whatever. It's like, no, let's play a DC one, please. I'm begging you. So I'm so excited for Royal Flush Gang, even though I barely know any of them are. I'm just, I'm just pumped for a little change of pace here. So hopefully maybe at Worlds, maybe sometime in the future for future events, we'll start doing stuff like that. And that'll be really, really cool. But what I am playing in, I'll run down my full schedule, not just the hero click stuff that I have registered. Ooh, I know I've registered for other games. Ooh, ah. Uh, I'll be with Simeon at the Friday 1 p.m. Uh, the X of Swords storyline organized play. I'll be playing in that. This game called Tolerance sounded interesting, and that's just like a free game that's at six as well on Friday. So I'm going to go jump over there and play a little bit of that, see if it's worth buying. I don't know, maybe. Uh, I'm an I'm a crazy person. So for Saturday, I have registered for a HeroClix U.S. Nationals qualifier uh, at 9 a.m., which Whoa. is I know so early uh, to get going here. But 
So I'm doing the. I think this is the last qualifier before nationals on uh, on f- Saturday. So that's cool, cool little, little qualifier. So we'll see. And then instantly at 2 p.m., which is around the time national starts. Uh, maybe I don't believe in myself as much as I should. I have registered for the Silver Age tournament. So if we don't make the nationals qualifier, we instantly have a Silver Age tournament to go play in, which will probably just be whatever team I'm playing slightly altered. Um, but if we do make the nationals qualifier, then I'll have to give somebody you sell my entry or whatever to the Hero Click Silver Age tournament or something. Uh, and then also at Saturday... Uh, at 6 p.m., I'm going to try to jump into this Marvel Champions campaign scenario where you can win a pack of like a Marvel Champions scenario cards. But I don't know if it's you or if it's a bunch of people, but you play against Ronan the Accuser. And so, as although I should be practicing more hero clicks, I'm actually like, man, I haven't played Marvel Champions in like a year. I need to, <laughs> I need to brush up on it. Yeah. I don't want to look too dumb. Uh, how like, what's a good deck to play against Ronan? Hmm, let's see. How does Ronan even work? You know, I don't want to be caught off guard by Ronan the Accuser here. I don't think he's going to be crazy difficult. And then I'm sure somebody who's listening to this that also plays champions is going to be like, oh, you sweet summer child, you silly, silly boy. He's he's the hardest Guardians of the Galaxy one that there is. And maybe he is. I don't know. But that's by registering. So a Silver Age tournament Saturday, and Nats qualifier Saturday morning, and then a little Ten of Swords Friday afternoon. So... That is that is Gen Con. I want to do a quick rundown reminder for some of the prizing here, guys. So for the qualifier, just by participating, I'm going to get all of the Plastic Man objects. Ooh, ah, the, the barricade, the round barricade, the fire hydrant, the traffic cone. And then if I somehow get top four, which is a.k.a. qualifying round, I will get a Thor Gwen and a God of Symbiotes, which is pretty sick. Nice. Uh, skipping over BR prizing, but just a reminder, that's all the same prizing as the qualifier. It's Thor Gwen, God of Symbiotes, and a traffic, all the traffic y Plastic Man related things. Yeah, I they are all very traffic the, pla- the Plastic Man things. Even Ooh. though those are supposedly like dropping everywhere. Which, I mean, to I know, be fair, falling from the sky. <laughs> none of us played in anything, even like Battle Royals or like anything at Worlds last year. So we didn't have a chance to win anything at all. But yeah, I. Right. Yeah. I we just don't enough. see them often enough i just i don't get them this is not fair well you also weren't able to play in any states which were they were also prizes for oh which is just a bummer because you were just judging yeah so like at states they were prizes but like yeah since you weren't able to yeah to play you're judging mm-hmm. yeah uh so shout out to the uh gameplay really quickly the learn to play game stuff you're gonna be using the beyond amazing miniatures game which is a pretty fun miniatures game there's a review simi and i did of it and then the participation you'll get a marvel hero Cook spider-man an individual figure from a bag of spider men So I'm curious what that looks like exactly. If that's like the L.E. Peter Parker and Miles Spider-Man thrown into a big old bag or what they are. Um, the Pulp Tournaments, which none of us are registered for because those sold out very fast, are the same prizing as the Silver Age Tournament, which is the top eight get a Venom God of Symbiotes, the top four get a Thor Gwen, and the winner gets plastic man objects it's very funny how they've kind of reversed the uh the prizes here for the qualifiers and the pulp and silver tournaments so that's kind of nice that if maybe if you play in both you'll actually just be able to get both by uh doing not good at all in a qualifier and just automatically getting all the plastic man stuff or and then not and just doing like okay in a pulp or silver tournament and then getting the venom god of symbiotes and the thorg one which is kind of funny uh, it's the same with theme. Theme is the same way where it's Venom, God of Symbiotes at top eight, top four is Thor Gwen, and then the winner gets all the Plastic Man stuff. Uh, Ten of Swords prizing is all the same stuff you're used to for the Ten of Swords prizing. And then a quick rundown of the Nationals prizing. Participation is going to get you a Superman, a John Constantine, a Zatanna, and then a Punisher Dark Reign figure. Cool, cool. Top 16 is the Wonder Woman Generations uh, 3 pack. Top eight get a Spider slash slash DR. Top four get a Avengers Million BC Phoenix. A finalist, the finalists, will get a Marvel Hero Hook Spider-Man Beyond Amazing set. Oh, no, it is just a finalist. That's right. One of the finalists gets it because it's all cumulative except for factory sets. So second place gets a Spider-Man Beyond Amazing factory set, which is pretty solid. And then the winner gets a Nationals trophy and the Avengers 60th factory set, which is just money with how expensive those chases are and an ultra chase and all the primes like yeah. that is such a good factory set to get uh and spider-man beyond amazing set is also very solid with of course 
uh, Carnage Silver Surfer, and then other expensive chases and whatnot. And whatnot. Little Iron Spider in there, too. He's a pretty spendy guy. So, that is Gen Con. That's the prizing. That's the tournaments and stuff that Simeon and I will be playing in. So, guys, we hope to see you there. Simeon, is there anything, any other, like, tips and tricks we want to mention about Gen Con? If this is maybe their first time going to Gen Con or just stuff to be on the lookout for? Uh, my number one thing is, like, if you don't have your badge already, like, make sure you plan on getting your badge, that being, like, a several-hour ordeal. Don't, like, show up expecting to be able to, like, yeah. walk somewhere, like, go up to a kiosk, print out your badge, and just, like, be good. Uh, it will pr- likely take up to an hour to two hours. I, I mean, it's hard to say, but it, it'll likely take way longer than you're expecting for most conventions to get a badge at Gen Con, especially it's a pretty if it's, big line. Yeah, big line. most people are going to be there Friday. Uh, some people are going to be there Thursday all, as well. So, like either day is going to be the busier days. If you're only showing up for like a Saturday or Sunday. That's, you know, whatever. If you're showing up for convention exclusives, make sure to check and see, like, right away when you can get, like, your time slot to buy them. And it sounds like from from the people I know that went to San Diego Comic-Con, they had a two-purchase two limit per person per day. So yeah. if you want, like, two Space Ghosts, two... Um, Supermans, I don't, I don't remember which all ones are, like, for sale at this one... But if you want two of each per day, you're going to have to specify, like, well, not at the kiosk, but you're going to have to, like, go up and tell them what, like, I want to be able to purchase convention exclusives from booth 121, I believe it is. I don't remember. But, yeah, you'll have to tell them, like, I want to be able to purchase convention exclusives from, like, this booth, and they'll give you a time slot, and then you can show up there and they'll let you know what is available to be purchased. I know in previous years, they've allowed people to buy people more. Yeah, it's 121. WizKids has allowed people to buy more. Usually Sunday is like, they don't want to have to haul anything back. So they'll lessen whatever that like limit is. Not always, but like in previous years, I have noticed that. And so sometimes if there's stuff left over in Sunday, you can buy more. You don't have to like, you know, do two at a time. But that doesn't mean that, like, the stuff that you really want won't be sold out by then. Because there's a good chance. Like, I mean, if everyone's buying two a day starting Thursday, I mean, even then, starting Thursday, there's a chance that it's sold out Thursday. Um, Yeah. Yeah, decent chance that some stuff will be sold out Friday. I can't remember from previous years, but I, I know I've seen in years past that, like, before Saturday, so like a Thursday, Friday only kind of situation, stuff had already been like sold out just by people buying two of each. So it's something to look out for if that's a big reason why you're going there is to get convention exclusives. Don't get caught up in the the whole right um, itinerary kind of thing. I need to be at this place at this time, whatever. You need to make sure if the reason you're going there is for convention exclusives to get your ticket to make sure that you have time to be at the booth at whatever time the ticket says so that you can buy those things. Because, yeah, if you give up your time slot, you're just giving up on basically getting them that day. And that's it's rough. Pretty much. You don't, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, I'll say quick reminder for what all the cons are going to be. It's going to be all the stuff from San Diego, which was the Hawkeye and Hawkeye, the Mermaid Batman and Space Ghost, as well as the Wonder Woman Generations three pack, the Thor Gwen, and then the God of Symbiotes Venom. So those will all be available at Gen Con. I believe they just keep on sliding down what's available. And then oh, the best stuff, the best stuff is at Worlds. But anyways, it's not what this is about. It's not what it's about. It's about Gen Con. Uh, so yeah, make sure to if you want any of those, pick them up. Especially if you know you're want to talk with some people in your play group or your friends that are like, hey, I can't make it. I would say be like, hey man, um, they have a what two per day limit. I'm only gonna stop in one day or this day or the other. I'll try to get you some. So just I would say try to do that for your buddies, for your homeboys, for your friends. Uh, that's what I like to do. You know. Um, yeah. I really don't want to buy a lot of these convention exclusives since I know we're going to no. be at World. And so. in previous years, I I loved trying to like grab as many as I could 
to bring back to oh, the locals man. and stuff. Man of Ultimate and... Warriors, I thought was insane. I love it. <laughs> After a while, like it's gotten harder to get multiples for local people, but then at the same time, it's like it seems like every local person that I would be like, "Hey, I'm going to be at this this event. Is there anything you want? Like, let me know ahead of time." They would always say, essentially, they would always say like the same five things. So it'd be like, great. So like, I have to go there four days in a row trying to get the same five things, or like, you know, whatever. And then yeah. there'd, there'd be like one convention exclusive that no one wanted. And so it's like maybe if like if you're gonna show up and like you've got a local play group and there's multiple people, if they can pick out their like favorite one, the one that they want the most, and if it still ends up all being the same, like that just yeah, that sucks, but is what it is. Um, I just know in previous years I've, I've asked people like, Hey, I'm going to be at this place. Uh, these conventions exclusives are going to be available. If I can get a hold of them, what do you guys want? And they'd be like one of each please. And I was just like, well, <laughs> I will try. And then it just never works out like that because one of them's always sold out. <laughs> one of them's always like yeah. harder to get or something, you know, I feel like, Space Ghost is a must grab. I, any any nerds listening, which is probably guess everybody, uh, I apologize. I've never seen anything at all Space Ghost related. Um, yeah, but he looks Jay super Solomon's. fun to play. Any he Jay looks Solomon's super cool. That keeps posting Space waiting, Ghost memes. Waiting for Space Ghost. Waiting for Space Ghost. Waiting for Space Ghost. Like, I get it. We're My face when I am Space Ghost. <sighs> I Space Ghost when I am faced. I'm like, oh, we know. We know. We get it. And he, I mean, he, he just looks like a genuinely, like, super fun piece. Same thing with, like, that Hawkeye yeah. and Hawkeye. I'm just like, wow. They look just like a blast to play. I love it when you can just look at, a, like, a figure and be like, oh, my gosh. That's just – maybe it's not meta. Maybe it's not whatever. But, like, that is a fun mechanic. Those are These are really cool mechanics. Yeah. I can't Same with play Venom them. God of Symbiotes. Oh, I don't dude, know if yeah, he's going to be competitive. But, holy cow, I want to play him casually. Uh, being able to <laughs> essentially yeah. charge across the map – that sounds like a ton of fun. Uh, send out a bystander, and then I just switch places with it, and I'm like, boom, here's this 200 point or 150 point, whatever, nightmare yeah, he's, scenario he's in your face. It's huge. Um, I'll say a few more uh, Gen Con things. Make sure to pick up a coupon book. These are super easy. There are people literally throwing them at you. They're like almost any registration desk, service desk, uh, info booth, whatever you want to call them, they'll all have a coupon book, just massive stack by them. These things can get you like 10% off this booth. Uh, there's one booth that gives out a free dice every year. Sometimes there's ways to uh, get a free pin or even uh, a free card to a game that maybe you didn't play, but maybe it interests you. I don't know if WizKids has anything in the coupon book this year. I honestly don't know if that's online or not. I didn't check, but it might be. You never know. So... I would say check out the coupon book because if you're just an in general board game enjoyer, there's a ton of cool stuff in there. Yeah, I will say it's it's way past like due as far as like this this event starts in three days now, um, as of like recording of this. But if you have somebody that's not big into board gaming or not big into like any of this kind of stuff, there's still a ton of like content every day. <sighs> There's so much. And it, it takes a lot of digging. But for 20 bucks, you can, like, learn how to make a, uh, like, leather wallet or something like that. Like, they will show you how to, like, I mean, I'm assuming 20 bucks entry is for, like, materials. And they're going to show you how to, like, leather punch and sew. And it's super simple, but it's it does take, you know, an expert to kind of, like, teach the like the craft there's stuff like that there's like uh more physical games where you're like throwing things instead of just rolling dice or flipping cards uh there's a lot of like really fun stuff that you can do at gen con um like i said kind of late now but if you do have somebody that's going with you that's not as interested or somebody that potentially would go with you that's not as interested yeah just scroll through like you know all the non like you know filter by things that aren't sold out and just scroll through every day and there's panels that you can do to like go to uh you know ask the editor if you want to like listen to somebody that talks about how they edit podcasts uh if you want to listen to people that have been like being dms or like dungeon masters 
game masters for years like decades there's panels for that and those are all free those are like short little things where you can listen to somebody talk about stuff those are really fun i've had like some of the most um like one-on-one kind of experiences in those little panels where it's surprising that there's not more people in there and so you end up getting to have a pretty interesting conversation with the person that's giving the panel yeah and yeah, yeah all, all the panels I believe are free I don't think there's any that you have to pay for there are some that have like a uh, a two dollar thing but like that's like um like your wallet one or like painting any ones that are like painting a miniature or oh, something like that you might like be like two something. bucks like yeah, yeah we, if you leave with something they might cost but it'll usually be pretty cheap but yeah you're right most of the panels are just like free to go because it's just somebody talking at you you know it's like why would you pay for that experience you know so it's like it's just kind of like a normal like at a at a normal convention i guess i go to a lot of these simian goes to a lot of these we we know i guess we mean maybe not everybody will but it's just like some dude talking about board games in there you know so it's pretty fun Uh, i will say for anybody that enjoys a bit of a treasure hunt a bit of a chase it's it's gotten easier now uh currently but something i super enjoyed when i first went there and just kind of didn't want to play a bunch of hero clicks when i first went to gen con i wanted to like cosplay more and i want to just kind of hang out walk around was the pin bazaar collect all the pins and you get like all these ultra rare crazy cool pins now i don't i can't i've looked at all the pins already so i've already kind of cheated i wanted to try to get it in my mind will i register for a bunch of events or do i need to take a day Maybe not a full day, but do I need to make sure I have plenty of time in my day uh, to go to all these different booths that either sell these pins or have play a demo of a game to then get a pin or do XYZ to get a pin? Uh, Some of them are like, ask nicely and you'll get one. And I'm like, oh, well, that's awesome. You know, a lot of the times it's like, here's, you know, give me $10 and here's a pin, you know, not in love with the $10 pin price point, but it is what it is. Uh, But anyways... Uh, to get all of these, it's super fun. You can go around, trade for them. Uh, most of the employees, in the past, employees would uh, would trade. And you had to trade a pin to get one of their more rare ones. And it was kind of at the volunteer slash employee's discretion for how they wanted to trade. You had to barter with them a little bit. So it could be tough, um, which led to me like doing a bunch of free demos of this one game to get what i call trade fodder pins and then <laughs> trading them to employees is really funny um but i think it was last year the two years ago it was just like these little slips of paper that you needed so you just had to every time you bought a certain pin you would get a, a piece of paper and then once you had all of the papers you could get the rarer pins and then once you had all of the rarer pins you could then get the one omega like ultra rare, whatever pin. It's just really fun if anybody enjoys that kind of running around, a collect-a-thon type bit. I thought it was great. I think it's a really fun time and all the pins look really cool. You can put them on a board, on a backpack, whatever. Uh, I recommend that if you're ever like, I'm a little hero clicks out. You know, I don't necessarily want to go play any board games. And it also lets you walk around. You know, you're kind of walking with a purpose, and I really enjoy that, where it's like you're on a mission, but I can still kind of check everything out, maybe get a little sidetracked. Totally cool. So... I super enjoy that. So if anybody wants to, just throwing it out there, which goes, kind of speaking of pins, there's one food truck every year that has a pin, (laughs) and it's this pizza food truck that has really, really good pizza uh, that you can get. So you're probably going to be eating at the food trucks a lot anyways this weekend, but if you for some reason just kind of stay inside and go to some of the concession stands around there, I wouldn't recommend doing that the whole weekend because some of these food trucks like really, really rock. Uh, they're like really good, but it is also like I was gonna say August, July, and a little warm outside. If you're they're planning really on staying in to eat, expect to pay probably double what you normally would for like food court kind of prices for like the amount of food and stuff. It's so like yeah, if you if you're like gonna like really eat like a heavy lunch, like if you if you're hungry around lunchtime and you don't want to leave the convention center and like have to like deal with coming back and blah blah blah. Um, yeah, just estimate yourself like what you would normally spend for lunch and double it because, yeah, like yeah. just a water is probably going to be like six bucks. Now, if you're willing to leave the convention center, go somewhere real quick, or if you're going to bring like some snacks to get yourself through lunch and then maybe like take a dinner break and then like come back the next day uh, or just like leave for dinner, come back the next day. That's different. Like that's that's a better idea, but 
you will be gone for you know like a majority of like the convention so if you're planning on being there as long as possible like really soaking up all the time and you don't want to go to the food trucks you don't want to leave the convention center yeah just make sure that you're prepared mentally for like seeing kind of like stadium prices and it always hits me maybe i'm different but it always hits me that's like just insane when like someone's like oh you like nachos in a water 21 22 and i'm like yeah hey, it's like, like how is that how is that in the double digits of like yeah it's literally chips cheese and then the thing that comes out of the ground if you dig deep enough in like nebraska how is this right. costing me this much but yeah that is like a that's just true for every convention but if you're new to like it the is. convention scene then yeah like it's not the best food inside just never is uh the better food is always on the outside but you will have to leave the convention come back in and therein lies a bit of like a just barrier to exit and re-entry it's a pretty small it's a pretty small barrier though like uh, the, the food trucks aren't that far away no but it is just like but it does feel it's not be it quick. does feel like mentally when you walk out those doors like ah, I'm done for the day. I can go back to the hotel and just, like, crash. That is true. And so if you're one of those people and you need to stay inside, continue to do stuff, then, yeah, like, I don't recommend leaving. But if you're one of the people that, like, can pop out, pop back in. Because I've I've done both, and I will say it's way easier for me to just stay in the convention. But as far as food goes, it sucks. It's bad. Yeah, food quality's rough in there. It goes down. You can't real get fast. a peanut butter jelly with waffle as a bun burger inside the convention. No, sirree, Bob. No, you can't. You can get that outside, though. You yeah. can get that heart stopper outside. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you can get the crazy cool. That, like I said, that one pe- that one food truck that does pizza. They have like a special pizza flavor every year. They had a really hot one, but they also had a, a ranch one, and then that one was Ooh. pretty good for me. I enjoyed it a lot. So. There's some pretty fun ones. They also have Wild Bill's uh, Root Beer, Root Bear, Root Bear uh, out there. And they do have a exclusive Gen Con Cup. So if you do, if you're a big Wild Bill Root Beer fan and you want the exclusive Gen Con Cup, uh, in years past, it is sold out like day one. So you might want to be in line to get that cup right away, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I think that's about it, though, for Gen Con. I think we've... Yeah. Hopefully everybody is ready and prepared and excited for a week of, you know, a weekend full of clicks and fun and companionship and whatnot at Gen Con. Let's go ahead. Let's run through some news super quick. We get... Uh, before we get into the Design Insight article, which has dials and stuff, I will say the Iron Man Iconics is up for pre-order right now, and those sculpts look stunning. Man, yeah. they look really good. The Hall of Armors. Uh, so it looks like the majority of them come with a little casing. A special little base sit in. type thing. Yeah. And there there was like a dude that made one out of PVC, and he posted like his picture. And while I appreciate like his effort and stuff... This has like a lot of detail and it looks really cool. Like I, I don't know how it'll work if it's meant to be put on. Like I assume it's not meant to be put on a map, but as far as display wise, I, they didn't really like show them together. Um, but it is really cool that they can not only just fit these armors, but also like any hero looks that's that size. I guess. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm, they also look taller, don't they? Like I know Some the sculpt them, is well, bigger. They look really tall. Yeah, like Thor they do, Buster, they do have like big. a little bit of like um, a heel off the base, where like okay, they look like extended further than normal. Especially the quote unquote like Hulk Buster. I assume that's what that is. Maybe Celestial Buster, uh, the Juggernaut helmet looking one that's like standing on his own. His is his looks exceptionally taller than the rest of them. Like. His little like foot base looks like it's raised like an extra half. I don't know. I look at the like the Mark One looks normal. I don't know what the second one is. Mark Five, Six. I don't know something. And then it yeah, jumps to some sort of like Hulk ish like big dude. And it's still a one by one, but yeah, his from the base it 
looks like it expands double the height of the rest of them. And so he's like meant to be like the center, like mantelpiece kind of thing. Maybe he's like it's. I know it's not like the celestial buster or anything like that, but I honestly don't know what that one is supposed to be. The OG Hulk Buster type. Yeah, because the next, the very next one is the Thor Buster, and it's shorter in comparison because it also fits like one of those little cabinet pieces. And then right. the, the fourth one or fifth one uh, is the Mysterio Buster. I, I honestly Mysterio don't know what Buster. this one is at all. Homeboy um, busted Mysterio. <laughs> it's gold armor with like weird little bendy parts and then like a big globe head. I have no clue. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Weird. Okay. Interesting. Oh, okay. I honestly, like if you are anyone that pays attention to like action figure collecting or anything like that, then you know that every anytime there's a hall of armor, people go nuts for like trying to get them all. Like when Iron Man 3 came out and there's like 80 million different suits of armor and stuff for like the Iron Man 3 hall of armor, if people like bought them all, a part of me is like, man, I should get I should buy this a bunch of times just to get the display pieces and then make every single Iron Man <laughs> have its own little like thing. That would be so awesome. But uh, not, uh, let me check this. Yeah, not fiscally responsible to do, uh, alas, which is just such a bummer. But they look so sick. And probably, I don't know, some of the sculpts probably really wouldn't fit in there, right? Like with the weird sloping. And whatnot, yeah, they probably wouldn't. Oh, uh, like average it. hero clicks, probably not. Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if they're doing anything besides their arms at their yeah. side, they're probably yeah. So that is probably the only downside I would say about all of these armors is outside of their cool display case, pretty uh, pretty rough sculpt, just kind of chilling hands at the sides but like they wouldn't fit in the display base otherwise really wouldn't make any sense ah oh, gosh i love this mark one that mark one is just beautiful yeah, i really like the damage on it oh um, i like the little damage so oh, okay good. i found it it's the iron man armor model six hydro armor so that's like the A deep sea diving one under underwater welder iron man yeah so you can expect some like uh, probably dolphin symbol and yeah, I don't know what he did underwater. I don't know. It's model yeah. six. So. If the bases are silver, oh, they're gonna look so beautiful on a map. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I like these. I like these a lot. I I hope there's more. To be honest, like as uh, as dumb as it yeah. sounds, like Iron Man has umpteen variations of armor, and I would really like to be able to do like a full set of like Iron Man armors at some point. Even, like, the extremist armor is really cool. I know, like, the celestial armor would take up, like, a lot of room. Um, there's that weird, like, point in, like, the 90s where he had giant gears for shoulder pads. Oh, that is the that is the Iron Man 2020 armor. Is that? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah so Iron did, Man of actually, the Future yeah, 2020. Yeah, did get that sculpt at some point then. Yeah, he was in Age of Ultron. Yeah, so, like... A, There's a yeah, lot of time. random armors that they could go with, um, and yeah, like this is just like a small, a small collection of them. But so, a taste, but a taste yeah. of the power of armors don't even that are available. The classic fear itself, Iron Man armor, the Uru armor, and what a good sculpt too. Yeah, that, that original coming out of the pit of the bowl of lava, molten metal, and stuff. Oh, yeah, so good, so good. But uh, so that's the Iron Man. We also saw a little Nebula from Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas. She's holding a big old box, which, as we know, contains Bucky's arm. If you've watched spoilers for the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, I love it. I really enjoyed the Christmas special when I watched it uh, around Christmas time last year. It's just grand old, grand old time. So I'm excited for the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas box. I think it's cool. And then we also saw the Black Lantern Green Arrow sculpt, which yeah. I will say, as far as dials in go, Technically, we already saw it via the the um, little bit, the little yeah. chase like thing. That's true, but 
That is true. I don't think we saw the actual sculpt. I think we just saw the I name. will say this was the one dialed win where I think every guesser had like a 99% chance of getting it right because we saw the Black Lantern full symbol and then arrows in his chest. And I was like, this couldn't be any other Black Lantern, right? And then, yeah, sure enough, it was all Oliver Queen here. So, shout out to the people oh, that guessed, uh, Merlin. I hope, hope it's cool. Did people guess Merlin? That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. The I like the villain that was shot with arrows. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. So this is pretty sick. I, I like this. Curious to see what he does. And then last bit of WizKids news here, official stuff. They did a design insight article about Notorious. They jump into a few things about the crime syndicate team ability, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be Big probability change. control. Uh, when this character uses it, immediately give a friendly character an action token. If you can't, this use of prob has no effect. Ooh. I Ooh. I don't remember what the original Crime Syndicate did. I thought it was pretty similar, where you just had to give a friendly character okay. an action token when you so use prob. Because I, I really like this. In lieu of like not having theme team prob anymore, I really like that I can do prob control, and then if I have you know one of ox arms i can give that a token or a construct can take a token or like you know just like some tertiary character that i don't really care about they're like a sport character they're not doing any actions anyhow they get an action token it doesn't count against my action economy they just get an action token for that use of prob i really like this. right yeah it's you know it's kind of like old school theme prob but the person that's probbing isn't getting the token it's kind of cool yeah uh they later go on to reference electrocutioner from batman arkham origins this is really neat uh so they reference his hired assassin trait which is during your first turn you choose an opposing character and if electrocutioner kills that character you score an additional 50 victory points. Ooh, Simeon, this sounds oddly familiar. Yeah. Uh, that's right. This guy's this ancient dude from, geez, nine years ago now, uh, was the inspiration for the new target traits that a lot of our assassin friends are getting. So the Court of Owls assassin. So this is interesting. The Court of Owls assassin here is not a goon either but he has that target trait which we've seen before uh, at the beginning of the game for all friendly characters with this trait give a target token to an opposing character for all characters with this trait when a friendly character with the assassin keyword KOs an opposing character with a target token score 25 victory points so you get a score in additional to killing that character which is really cool and it's like that's where all of that kind of originated from was all electrocutioner here which is pretty yeah. fun and victory points I like that for anyone that is slightly confused not the same as mission points. Victory oh, no, points no, 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 no. are what is considered like all points that you, score, you score against your yeah, opponent. Yeah, it's like when you kill my Captain America, you would score forty-five victory points. You score his point value; his point value would be three points. Yeah, and if you defeat yeah. an opponent, you score all victory points that they could on have had floor. or like would have had, regardless yeah. of whether they were on the map. So, like if they have that twenty-five point like herald dial. You score it when you like defeat the entire opposing force, et cetera, et cetera. Um, right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The main thing is like victory points aren't often, and maybe they will be going forward, but they're not often referenced. And we did have a lot of like mission points being referenced prior. So there was like some instant confusion when that's, the target trait that's popped out. Fair. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, the Court of Owls assassin that we're looking at here also goes on to say they have traded Blaze Claws Fangs, but only if Court of Owls assassin occupies hindering terrain. Kind of interesting. Which is where you want them. Uh, yeah, exactly. They have stealth, combat reflexes, shape change, and precision strike top dial, and they move on to some poison and super senses down dial. So, yeah, stealth, combat reflexes means I want them to be in hindering terrain. And then, oh, yeah, I also get blades. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Good enough. So they got Court Owls, Gotham City, Assassin, and Martial Artist. They're a fun little generic, and they have the target trait. So what do you know? Pretty cool. So they also wanted to go into talking about messing with terrain here, um, just like interacting with the new special terrain and everything. Simeon, do you want to talk about Captain Cold here? Yeah. So as he... someone who's who's once dressed up as Captain Cold <laughs> and looked very similar to this similar, guy. Similar to this Captain Cold. 
uh, less a burrito. Um, so yes. evil ways of interacting with terrain. Several characters in Notorious will have the ability to generate named terrain markers like Captain Cold and Ice Terrain. We also saw the uh, polar bears when they are they're goons and when they are KO'd, they generate a ice terrain, I believe. Um, so Captain Cold here has leadership when he uses it and succeeds. This turn, friendly characters automatically break away. Cool. He's got a 60 and 40 point line. He's got a plasticity sidestep differential between those two, sidestep being his 60 line. Um, pretty normal stats. 11s, 3 at top, and then he goes down to 2 with uh, range combat expert and some prob on the last two clicks. Whole dial of barrier. And then the last two clicks, instead of his special attack power on his last two clicks, he has in cap. So he has a special attack power for his first four. And that special attack power is the cold gun incapacitate when Captain Cold uses it or hits when he hits after resolutions. He may generate an ice blocking terrain marker adjacent to a hit character. This game, that terrain marker has adjacent characters must roll breakaway to move if they don't already. At the beginning of your next turn, even if this is lost, remove it. So he does have two targets. Uh, he can use that with his in cap or with just his normal damage. As long as he hits, he gets to place that terrain. It's pretty solid. Um, basically, like I, I sidestep up shoot you and place this ice barrier marker not only can you not shoot through it if you want to try and get around it you have to break away uh, it doesn't say they have to break away as if they were adjacent to him which is a wording that we've seen before which would make a lot more sense on his like plasticity dial but yeah yeah they have to break away to move if they don't already so yeah it's kind of a fun way to have him he's more of a Gosh, uh, not like the Leonard start of normal, like newer kind of like stuff. This looks like a really old version of Leonard. Really, Star. really old. Yeah, the, the sculpt ancient is, Captain Cold. Yeah, the sculpt. Like if if you told me they were redoing like the '60s Batman set, but for like the Flash's Rogue, that's what this Leonard start looks like. Is very uh, very goofy, old and cartoony. Kind of he fits in line with that Legion of Doom. Lex Luthor, very old yeah. uh, power armor that he is rocking. So maybe that's kind of the vibe and they're going for there. Not for nothing, he is standing on like ice. His little, oh, that is fun. His little I do base, like that little foot peg base is like icy. So hopefully that's what they actually print out instead of just like plain concrete or whatever. Right. Yeah, a lot of it's been like concrete or green or brown, you know. So I do like to see a little bit of effects like that. Maybe not for everybody, you know, but it's good to see it every once in a while. Check them all out. Uh, so they go on to say, not all named terrain with a special effect. However, some will have ties to characters. For example, we get into old black hand here. So the darkness grows as all light dies. Lanterns are back. They're back in black. Burr. Uh, the Black Lanterns in Notorious all generate and interact with graves, having both a way to generate them and an effect that applies to any friendly grave, regardless of who generated the grave. Ooh, ah. This is design space that we've explored before, but I've never fully committed because there was little counterplay to heavy terrain generation prior to the last rules update. Now, however, with Quake and Super Strength and Destroy actions offering frequently appearing in the game, uh, we answer to terrain generating uh, teams were free to build terrain out as significant theme for a keyword so like get ready to dig some graves did hella like hella and war of the Realms reference graves and maybe she did make a grave marker Malakid that's that's her little thing she did grave marker right yeah i feel like they're yeah like they said i feel like they definitely did do grave markers yeah, prior so. but yeah yeah this will be like a grave hindering terrain marker versus like a special marker i think that those ones were necessarily so i don't know if they'll be the same i don't know uh black hand here as the black lantern core herald and monster keywords he has a trait black as night falls from the skies free generate a grave hindering terrain marker within range if any characters were ko'd this turn you generate two instead notice it's not range in line of fire so you can just throw these graves through walls kind of yeah. crazy kind of cool it's uh, also not his standard character so ooh i guess you're right if any characters were ko'd this yeah. turn okay wow dang sick. little All right. herald theme walk your okay. uh, walk your boot out of the arena oh, walk your spotlight away from you 
Yeah, I was about to say, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna kill any terrain, it's gonna be the spotlight. Get out yeah, of here, spotlight. Get out of here, spotlight. Uh, so yeah, you kill a spotlight and you just make two grave markers. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, his dial's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. He ignores hinder train for line of fire. He's got five range, so that's your grave range marker for old Bill Hand here, old William Hand. Uh, pretty fun sculpt, nothing crazy cool. Pretty pretty neat. He's got running shot, pen a little bit of outwit, mastermind top dial. He flutters between some toughness and mastermind for a couple of clicks, and then he lands on an all black click on click eight with the you know all black powers, some regen there to help him get going. Uh, he's, it's an interesting dial. Uh, his 50 point less, he's 115 at top, or his 50 point line, he's got stealth mastermind TK with a damage power. This damage power he has for four clicks of life yeah. from his third click to his sixth. Um, super interesting, super interesting dial design. Uh, perplex, when Black Hand uses it, he can target characters occupying or adjacent to any fra- friendly grave markers, regardless of range and line of fire. So he's throwing out his grave markers, and then now he can just perplex you from anywhere if you're in a grave marker. So that's kind of neat. So, you know, two cool things about him one, in sealed, he's a 115 point psychic blast, 11 for three outwit that sees through hindering and i feel like there's probably going to be a lot of self in the set so you probably want that sees through hindering in sealed um pretty cool for an uncommon um what's insane about him though is like everything on his like card says play him at 50 he has stealth topped out a lot at 50. a lot of that he yeah. free generates a hindering terrain every turn potentially too so like he's always in stealth as a free action like on your turn at least maybe your opponent can move it or something but like he's always on your turn you're always able to put him in stealth no matter what and then he also starts with that perplex where he can target characters um occupying or adjacent to any friendly grave terrain marker regardless line of fire so like that's just like huge being able to I, I think in constructed this guy with like necron is going to be really interesting necron okay. like the I think he comes in at like 40 and um, he also has like a free generate a hindering grave marker. And then anyone that's occupying one, like they can heal past their starting yeah, line. So yeah, that's really stupid. Yeah. Like black hand here, healing past his starting line actually kind of hurts you because if you play him at 50 with black hand or with uh, Necron and then he heals up, he loses his stealth. His defense doesn't get much better. And then if he heals up again, he loses that perplex power and just goes to normal outwit. Obviously, like you could kind of pick and choose when to do that. But yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what all the Black Lanterns do. I mean, at, at this point, I think we it's safe to assume that Black Hand and Necron will allow most of them to heal quite frequently just because of how easily they generate these grave markers. And uh, Necron allowing them to heal past their their starting lines when they're uh, like on them or adjacent. It's pretty pretty cool. Then yeah, finally, uh, let's see. They say finally, as promised in the intro, you'll be able to see an entirely new mechanic in Heroclix that has never been used before in Clickstery. It's pretty big change to gameplay, and we think players will flip when they see it. Hopefully, in a good way. Uh, I do like, I'm not going to read the end right away, but I do like that at the end, there's just like <laughs> most hero clicks players that would have a problem with this have like a very easy out where they shouldn't have a problem with this. So this is two face. We've seen him before. This is zero 50 a, and then he references the zero 50 B two face. So this is his first trade is heads. I win free. If two face began the turn on the map, flip a coin. If it's heads, modify his combat values plus one until your next time turn. Otherwise, either replace him with 050 B two face or deal him one unavoidable damage. So I'm hoping 050 B is not a prime. Otherwise, anytime you play this guy, you have to play his alternate prime or whatever, or you take unavoidable damage on a 50 50 but yes it's uh flipping flipping a coin is the big thing um so we've never had coin flips in hero clicks before it's always been some sort of dice roll whether it was a d20 d6 whatever uh but like harvey dent will never apologize for a coiny joke notorious was a set where we really wanted to put flavor first and what better way 
then a two-face that can flip coins to get some rules questions out of the way. One, the coin used must have both a clear head's tail and a tail's side. So it can't just be the same side on both, can't be a trick coin, blah, blah, blah. I think that makes sense. This is a game that you shouldn't cheat while playing. So, yeah, no trick coins. Effects that reroll dice cannot be used to reflip coins, even if that coin flip is replacing a roll. Effects that numerically change dice results or that trigger off of certain numerical dice results don't apply to coin flips, even if that flip is replacing a die roll. So anytime it references a die roll, or anytime it references a coin flip, rather, uh, just assume that you can't do anything that you would normally do to like a standard D6 kind of situation. If a player doesn't have a coin to flip, or if they choose not to flip a coin, they may roll a single die instead, where an even result is heads and an odd result is tails. If a die is rolled in this way to simulate a coin flip, it is still considered a coin flip and cannot be re-rolled by re-roll effects or have its result numerically modified. So fear not, if you're broke and you ain't got a single penny to flip, you can still roll your plain old dice... But uh, you can't re-roll. You best not. You best not be planning to play Two Face yeah. and not be bringing no coin with you. I I will. I'll go. A, I'll give you one. You need a fifty cent piece if you're playing Two Face. Oh please, yeah, a fifty yeah. cent that'd be so baller. Yeah, or uh, some Sakaga way. I coins. need a. I need a silver dollar. Of <laughs> them gold Sakaga way is the. <sighs> okay. Okay. Uh, yes, the dollar coins with her as well. Those would be perfectly fine and reasonable. Um, you don't see a lot of those nowadays, those gold dollar Sacagawea coins, do you? No, there was a time where vending machines literally had like a little slot, like a special I slot do remember for them. that, yeah. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. I remember going to Walmart when I was a kid and exchanging ten dollars for like ten of those coins for some reason, just because I thought it was cool to have like uh, that doubloons. Cool. I was like, I got a bunch Me of that. gold in my pocket. <laughs> I got American doubloons. Yeah, I'm a pirate, <laughs> and uh, I don't, I don't know whatever happened to those. I, I assume I wasted them on like pizza and candy or something. But yeah, you bought just a bunch of pop. Yeah, or I was whatever. a child. Random. So like, as soon as I saw a vending machine that was like, we accept like these gold coins for a dollar, I was like, well, heck yeah. I can't wait to pay $2 for Doritos. Uh, but with my <laughs> blue. <laughs> oh, gosh. Continuing. But yeah, uh, <laughs> please, please bring a cool, real coin if you play Two-Face. Even those, like, uh, I think Pokemon uses coins, and every time you buy like a collector set of Pokemon, you get like a oh, coin. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's, there's a lot no of board way. games, and there's also a lot of coin flips in like uh, Flip trading card action games. Token. So if you have like different sided action tokens, maybe oh sure, flip an action token. Yeah, you know, I swear if there's somebody that gets like a rigged coin, and we have to have a conversation about this, I'll be so, I'll be so mad. Like the yeah. uh, we'll Batman we'll movie, we'll two face their coin, just like. Yeah. Coin. yeah. Oh, you thought your cool coin was cool? Uh, soldering iron to it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if your opponent has brought a coin to flip, you may choose to borrow it when an effect of yours causes you to flip a coin. No, I think you should have to borrow it, but okay. Yeah. So if you're both playing a coin flipper, which... Uh, <laughs> I believe is just this character. I don't know who else is gonna yeah, flip coins no besides Two Face. Off the top of my head, I yeah. don't. I really don't know. I, I want there to be more. I can't imagine. I like, don't. there's a lot of people that like sit. Like, oh. that's his whole thing. Um, know what, Simeon? Bullseye, a daredevil. a daredevil that does a coin flip because of the moment in Civil War. Like, he doesn't flip the coin, but he gives Iron Man that silver piece. Oh, sure. Civil War. Oh, I'd be yeah. cool with that. Well, you then uh, if you're going to go that far, you could say Phantom Stranger because his okay. whole necklace is silver pieces. Also true yeah. uh, for the same reason that I was going to say Bullseye is like, um, what was it? Like the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie where Bullseye like oh, he did, flips. Yeah. I don't know if he ever flips a coin, but he like 
kills people with like paper clips the, and corn the chips. Disney Plus Hawkeye. Oh yeah, does a little quarter trick. They hit right. the TV. Yeah. So I don't know how that would necessarily be a coin flip to <laughs> hit the TV. We get sweatpants, we get sweatpants uh, Hawkeye that will uh, yeah. change the channel. Sweatpants bandage up Hawkeye changes the channel. And then if you've made eight successful coin flips, then finally Kate Bishop can do it. <laughs> it took her like a yeah, bunch. You, you've trained Kate Bishop enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they finish out with a with saying, hopefully it goes without saying but just like a player's hero clicks dice must be unbiased, aka not rigged in any way, the same must be true of any coins they wish to flip. So uh, they've never implemented like a way of testing someone's dice. Like, you know, there's no like jumbly machine that you have to put your dice that you're going to use in before a tournament. But if your opponent says like, I think my opponent's, die is like rigged or my uh, my opponent's coin seems to have two heads on one size expected disqualification because they put it in the rules right there they said don't do it and if you do it it's too late uh they go on to say dc hero clicks notorious releases this september additionally we'll have our first ever quick hits article for you closer to release day in which our team will discuss some of the details and behind the scenes creation stories that went to making our first ever mega set mega mega um, i'm really interested in this cuz yeah i i didn't even realize like going into the set i know a few people said like the solicit said like mega set it's got a lot more generics than normal and stuff it's a fairly large set but i am interested we've never seen behind the scenes creation stories so oh it's gonna be I'm fun curious now. potentially interesting yeah i'm pumped i'm excited for it and that is the notorious news and all the official hero clicks news that we got from whiz kids this week moving on Mexico's nationals and also a states tournament happened this weekend. Shout out to Mastercore on Facebook. That's where you could catch the live streams. Of course, everyone was speaking Spanish. So for people like me uh, watching it, I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, they said Sicarian. They said Sicarian. Okay, I know who's, I know who's going to do something now. Yeah, uh, that was, was it. That was really it. My brain was um, racking for like the... Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Like oh, yeah. All, yeah. all the numbers. I, I was like, ah, okay. He's counting up dice rolls. All right. Now I'm now I'm back in it. And then they would go into like a tirade about something. And I would be like, I got two of those words. Um, but no, <laughs> it was a really fun watch. And it's up on, yeah, like Master Core. Um, if you want to go back and watch the States. Or if you want to go back and watch the Nationals, they're both up there. They're the most recent videos that they did. So pretty cool. A um, lot of different tech. I will say they are playing things that are not normal. And I think with Saul winning in Worlds in 2022, um, I hope that like most American players realize that like other areas play different like kind of tech and tactics and stuff. And ultimately, it led Saul to winning worlds because, you know, yeah. like their their tech just happened to be either slightly better or like the tactics happened to be slightly better. And we saw some interesting tech and tactics in just this nationals and this like quote unquote states or slash provincials, whatever they call it. So yeah, uh, there there was wild tech. Uh, I won't lie, I was like really caught off guard by some of the things people were playing here. Yeah. Um, we'll start with the, the, the quote unquote ROC state. States first. So they did their States Friday night. Uh, it was real late for us. I don't know what time it was for them, but they ended at like 2 AM and Friday night. Like I was, I was still up watching it. I was incredibly invested. So, uh, they posted the top eight. I won't go into the whole top eight, but I will say the, Current world champ, Saul, he was running Sky Tyrant. Obviously, at 50 points, he was running uh, Genesis, APOC, both at 35. Sakarian, Iron Man, Mephisto, the new Ultra Chase. Professor X, I don't know I said the new Ultra Chase. Like, there's no other modern Mephisto. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dark Phoenix, 
all black necro sword on sky tyrant cloak of levitation on scar and iron man and then sword bearer i assume on just genesis yeah just genesis so no sword bearer on apoc but it was an x-men theme team so plus three to map roll and then on the sideline because everyone becomes x-men professor x could swap in peeper tarot uh let's see venom magneto and then he had the destroyer just as like the prime slot king killmonger as one of the a60 chase swaps and iron inquisitor as the other a60 chase swap so six sideline slots all filled three of them for x swap I think more most of the games that I ended up watching, he did end up swapping in Tarot and Venom Magneto, and I didn't catch like what all he swapped out. But I will say, um, Peeper giving Sky Tyrant a what is it plus two to speed, and then also right. a empower, pretty solid. Sky Tyrant also is equipped with the you know obviously the uh, all black Necro Sword, and then. Swapping in um, Venom Magneto for uh, the double TK kind of situation. His team was very, uh, <clears throat> it was very alpha heavy, but then the A60 yeah. chases seemed to be like very heavy into like the late game. So, like, he would alpha with Sky Tyrant, maybe lose Sky Tyrant. He really didn't lose hardly any points in Swiss. Uh, yeah, like in the first four matches of Swiss, he lost a total of 150 points in four matches, which is insane. Like, I, I don't that even know where the math works wild. out. But, like, yeah, it's essentially, like, he lost, like, a Peepers in one game, nothing in one game. He lost a Sky Tyrant plus Necro Sword in one game. And then... um I don't even know what in like the third game he lost 60 points. So I don't know how exactly that added up, but yeah, it was pretty nuts. Uh, how good this team did going into the finals and it did go into the finals. It, he ended up being in the top eight with it. And the team that he ended up facing in the top eight was actually, I wasn't, I was, I don't know. I wasn't going to consider it the underdog, but it did come in second seed. Uh, it was also undefeated, I believe. Yeah, also an undefeated going into uh, the top eight. Um, so, Jose Eduardo Oroz Orozco. Jeez, my Spanish is awful. Uh, he was running Saint Walker at 30, Felix Faust at 30, Sky Tyrant at 50, the Prime Batman from Batman Team Up at 25, Scarab at 50, Fred the chase Fred at 40 and tempo at 35. So this was a non theme team. He had the shock gauntlets equipped to scarab, the emotional modifier on Felix radioactive clay on tempo. That's obviously just for scarab to copy, uh, utility belt and the green lantern ring come on to Batman for free blue lantern ring on Saint Walker for free, all black necro sword on sky tyrant for free. And then Captain Carter Shield on Fred for free. So Fred is defending an 18, and then it's giving everyone a plus one because Captain Carter Shield. I don't know how exactly this team works, but like the main thing is he did run uh, three mystery cards on his sideline. So Stakeout, Murder in the City, Enduring, and String of Cat Burglaries. So anytime, anytime uh, Fred there is able to activate one of these he gets a plus one to his defense as well which would put himself at a 19 right eight uh 20 i don't, I don't remember i don't remember exactly how that works but uh every, yeah yeah this this team ended up winning so good old saint walker like no no figure over 50 points which i find crazy in this current like meta it's pretty but, wild yeah sky sky tyrant and scarab being the highest point figures Batman Prime just being, you know, like a smoke cloud uh, and then essentially like utility belt construct dropper. Um, two construct droppers, I think maybe just really good. Uh, the main force tempo is really the thing that like kind of blew me away with 
having tempo main force when tempo has like the x-men keyword so you could swap if need be but this team it's literally just tempo at 35 points so you have a prob you have a plus three to speed if you want to do that and then you also have you know your opponent can't use super senses when they're adjacent to tempo but man i did not see that call this ended up winning their states though um it's kind yeah. of crazy to me. This team just, I don't know, maybe we're just not seeing something, but I'm just yeah. like, wow, I was on very paper, surprised it, that it won. On paper, I don't see it beating out that previous team that we talked about. And then in practice, like, obviously, uh, yeah, somehow it just it just did. Uh, I really thought, like, the, the Mephisto tech with uh, – X swap and like Sky Tyrant, Sakari and Iron Man. Sakari and Iron Man just seems like an instant play if you're not playing theme, and it's not on this build. So, yeah, it's just he found more interesting stuff to play. Apparently, I guess, man. It's I don't know. It's really, really wild though that this one. So, I mean, congratulations. But that is a crazy unique team. I do say, and I talked about this a lot when we were like watching the stream. Murder in the City Enduring is so good but with two green lanterns on this team to proc it it takes forever to get going like uh so suspect six is friendly characters have safeguard opposing perplex and prop pretty solid but it's only if like a green lantern from the character with a list of keywords so that's green lantern or detective um what is it uh, what is it? like it's a remove an action token or something I want to say that's what murder in the city enduring is um, yeah one or more action tokens removed to gain a clue token so it's like geez that's so hard to pull off it's like get a willpower or just clear um, so it's like man this is going to take a very 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 long time with two characters that do it but uh, the other ones I don't really remember about the other ones uh, but they are maybe a little faster it's tough because, I mean, when you get to nine on Murder in the City, you do just give someone plus one combat values and then cosmic energy. Like, it is really, really good. But, uh, but yeah, so speaking of other cool teams, that was States. Moving on to Nationals, we have the full top eight here from Nationals. One team that I just wanted to point out, this one didn't win Nationals, but was just wild to see that this was in top eight, is a team that used mostly pretty much all the batman uh chases from yeah. batman team up which is the just mystery insane. gang yeah Chase the mystery team. gang so he had fred at the full 60 points with captain carter shield just velma at 40 with shot gauntlets the 059 batman so chase bats utility belt shaggy with waldo arms and Daphne with Lasso of Truth, Scrappy Doo, Absorbing Man on the Sideline, uh, String of Cat Burglaries, Murder in the City Enduring, um, what is that? Stakeout, and then the Plunspheric Disc. Um, so, this one, since you have a full team of detectives, a little easier, I think, to get Murder in the City going off, popping off here. But, man, like. I always thought, oh, you know, these chases are pretty fun, casual pieces, you know. But the fact that it got top eight is wild. This dude is only playing two small maps. He was doing Dockyard and Wakanda. But I really man, wish I had seen more just, of those. I saw. I want to know and... this person's play style, how yeah. they were using the team, because this is wild to me. <laughs> so, that, like, the craziest, like, so... One. Our world champ Saul, he was, he went into this tournament playing the same team that he was in the states, and he didn't make top eight. But this, yeah, this mystery gang chase theme did, and I was just like, man, there has got to be something going on that I'm just absolutely missing. Obviously, I mean, we all know that they get like a bunch of modifiers popping off if they can do like the mystery cards like any mystery card like they have a trait that you know right. fred gives plus one defense uh shaggy gives like plus one attack scooby gives plus one damage like well i don't remember exactly which all are which but however it works out plus ones normally doesn't make or break like a game so i yeah. really am interested to see uh, maybe like go back and watch through with like some commentary or something 
and see like how exactly his team did just make up so much distance in my opinion because no one stateside as as far as i can tell is even considering that and he basically right you know he made top eight in nationals so he basically uh in most states would have won like uh, a smaller states i'll say like that team probably would have been like not just top eight but probably like close to winning uh in the finals or something as far as you know what a nationals is compared to a states yeah exactly right uh finally do you you want to get into do our, you want to get into the winner of ETH? Our, yeah absolutely yeah so our winner was the, running the a Mexico master of master of evil theme team uh multiversal masters of evil theme team so this is gosh i'm not gonna say mario it's so, because it's so unique it looks like uh, magio uh, yeah i don't want to <laughs> yeah. i don't know so um oscorp warehouse shield holding and construction site were the three maps all smaller maps uh running on main force thor mephisto kid thanos iron inquisitor kill Mo- king killmonger ghost goblin so all of those characters are at 50 points except for mephisto who's at 30 which allows for exactly three equipments the cloak oh, on baby. mephisto the pumpkin bombs on ghost goblin and sinestro ring on thor thor coming in with the uh team up card so he cannot swap out and then also coming in on the king the theme geez team up card kid thanos so both of those being played with their team up cards potentially you can decide each game i assume every game he started thor with it maybe not every game he started kid thanos with it uh but then sideline is another dark phoenix kid thanos black skull hound king killmonger and doom supreme so gosh uh like say what you want as far as like how much this team costs but it all comes out of basically one set, which I find hilarious that that is, like, how good it can be. Uh, Mephisto, obviously, I think if you're running a Masters of Evil theme team, he just makes such a difference. Such a good tempo control. Not only are you able to heal, you're able to, like, take action tokens off. You get a pick which, like, is more beneficial to you at which situation and you can take like an action token off and then swap into somebody. So there's just so much utility with Mephisto. Also, without his team up card, he just never on this team, he just never isn't available to you. Because even if they KO him, he just goes to the sideline and then you can just bring him in again. So it's an instant instant ability that Mephisto brings. Um, I think, yeah, uh, Thor's team up basically allows the team to get through every single reducer so uh his team up specifically says i know we looked up earlier but uh it says um damage dealt by uh damage dealt by friendly characters with the asgardian or masters of evil team theme team uh can't be reduced below two so that's his big thing and then Kid Thanos, his team up. I again, he didn't have to pick this theme up, like this team every time, uh, because it is during. I think it's during. It's not during forest construction. I think it's after that. So it's after like it's during the checking for like theme team or something. I believe that you get to choose to whether you swap or not. But uh, Kid Thanos has the Masters of Evil and Scientist theme up. Theme team up. If Kid Thanos is listed. On a list theme team, friendly characters have safeguard opposing perplex. So it offers a little bit of utility as far as not being able to be targeted with perplex. But I think that Thor team up is the bigger one where he's able to dish out damage and they just can't reduce it. So they're just taking full damage from Thor, yeah. Thor full damage from Mephisto's poison, from ghost goblins poison from uh, uh kid dark thanos phoenix's poison pre- yeah from back deal kid thanos move. Uh, yeah ghost goblins energy explosion like any anything that's dealing damage is dealing damage basically which is pretty big that's you know 
not going to get into like the, the tarot cards, but um, I think like suffice to say, like the, I if I was playing this, I would probably have like the one that doubles up on the energy explosion, so it makes it three damage instead of two. Um, probably like the one that deals with like super senses or uh, maybe the one that does mastermind. I don't know. Yeah, there's there's a lot of options as far as the tarot cards go, but I think his main build was just knowing when to swap, how to swap, and I mean he ended up winning the the whole uh, nationals. So it's impressive. Yeah, we've seen a lot of just this chase theme from like Mexico nationals before. I believe the last winner of nationals had like an almost all secret six chase team, like some prime gigantic something in there. So. They just man, they big money, big spenders down <laughs> down there being like, yeah, I'll just run all the chases, especially with this chase theme. They really where like, he's got yeah, doubles and more on the sideline. It's wild, man. Man, it's just it's just insane to me. So, congratulations, crazy cool, like using the team up card, and you know a lot of people don't like Thor at all, barely like him as a call in usually not one of the chases you're really thinking about and i think this just goes to show you that a lot of people just write off a chase and they kind of just let the team up card or everything yeah. else go to the wayside that's when a, in reality thor is like super a fine, strong team up card yeah really Which, strong team up card and thor's a fine chase to keep in the fray he's got a stop click he's got traded enhancement he's got all these other cool things so like really i would not i would hope one. that uh keep in. Heroclix players, like U.S. side Heroclix players, learned their lesson last year not to underestimate these guys. Um, just because like they're not in like your competitive circle doesn't mean that they don't have interesting tech that they come up with. And this is one of those things where it's like I don't know what in our states would have been able to beat this because like Thor alone, <laughs> like that team card with Thor yeah. alone, changes a lot of stuff. Like. There's a lot of figures that are good until you see that can't reduce damage dealt by two, like more than two. Like, oh, this is gonna, like, this is gonna ah. hurt. Yeah, you're like, ah, so, so like, uh, all these things just do nothing to like energy explosion, to pulse wave, to, you know, blades, like all these, like, you know, poison, like random, random little things that you don't really take into account all of a sudden really right. matter. Gonna, just shout dang, a ton of damage. It's gonna hurt. Yeah. So, yeah, congratulations there. And I think to finish off the podcast, we'll go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! We got some questions on Discord here. This is our Patreon exclusive Discord. Five bucks a month gets you access to the Discord. This is so much more than just chatting and little rooms here and there, some voice, whatever stuff. We have um, exclusive bloopers from the podcast, exclusive never before, before seen videos, videos that are just made for Patreon members that are part of the Discord, all sorts of crazy cool stuff, early looks at videos and podcasts and all these really cool, interesting things, as well as entry into our monthly giveaway every month. So, plus you get to build pick, uh, our brains and the rest of like the, the group's yeah. brains about like you get a, hero clicks builds and stuff. Get to chat and hang out. It's pretty yeah. fun, pretty awesome. Bill asked two questions. It's expressly... Oh, no. We already did this one. Sorry. Noob question. When you play in person, do you usually face the eye of the dial toward yourself or toward your opponent? I assume eye. You mean the window. I've always called yeah. it the window. It is, yeah, yeah. I believe the dial under it. Yeah, specifically referred to as window. But yeah, the, My, the opening on yeah. the dial. My characters, I don't care so much about the stat window. The sculpt is always looking at whoever they're attacking sculpt is always facing uh the opposing pieces which typically means the dial window is Usually, facing forward yeah. and i don't need to see it. it it's on my card i can look at the yeah. card whenever my opponent needs to be able to easily see my dial information I'll say, for what's showing i i kind of just do it like lackadaisical if i know my opponent is a newer player or a like less experienced player i'll always make sure that they can see what's on the dial so i always face that as like to them as I can, especially like before they attack or something. Like I'll like even adjust for like sure. my figures if I forgot to, because yeah, it's there's no reason for them to be like ah, uh, it's like a eleven into a something, and you're like it's a uh, twenty two. So well, you no, need, you need yeah. an eleven. 
and then they, yeah. they get like surprised and they're like well I, I don't feel like changing my my attack now because i already said it out loud and it's like well no reasonable person with all the information would have made that decision so here we I, go i, guess. I essentially yes. forced you into that, you know oh boy yeah but uh, no, yeah they, face it towards people or like Calder yeah. said, most of the time facing the sculpt like as if they're all battling will also do that same thing there's very few instances where the sculpts are like slightly backwards for some reason Ooh, yeah i i just hate the idea of the sculpts not looking forward like looking back at me even if it's like ooh, but you can look at your information it's like no that's weird i don't like it it looks weird like all the halo figures have the sculpt they're looking toward their the back of their dial which would be away from the window so you could keep the dial window toward you and then the sculpts toward them but i just hate the way that looks and that's also yeah. like steve rogers captain america sculpt is that way and i can't stand that being just to me it just looks backwards and i don't like it at all uh yeah i like the sideways sculpts way more where they're like running off to the side like a flash Ooh, run like to uh, the side the red guardian and, uh, and uh he shares the sculpt with uh, the newest cap avengers yeah yeah, yeah that cap yeah i prefer that to the looking totally backwards i just i don't like it I don't like it at all Alex the Enchanter asks, everybody has a preferred play style of teams that they build and play. We've heard a lot about yours over the years and are now seeing it more ever thanks to the WizKids article series. Well, thank you, Alex. And then he says, what are your favorite kinds of teams to play against? I, so I have multiple teams I like playing against and it depends on my mood. So if I just want to, this is one of the reasons why me and Calder get along so well is because if I just want to play a game of hero clicks and I want to shut my brain off and just like slap pieces together, um, I just build like things that like go to the middle of the board and they just punch, you know, like maybe, maybe I lose a few figures, maybe I don't, but like either way I get to like hit something. And so that's like one of my favorite ways to play. Cause I can literally just shut my brain down and just, you know, uh, like I can phase four and so like that's what I'm gonna do like that kind of thing I move up and then I wait for my opponent to like move up and then somewhere in the like the middle we attack I really like playing against that but at the same time I also really love playing against somebody that has like some sort of little niche combo that they've found where it's like they get to pull off like this intricate like series of events essentially um, I've seen it with like, you know, the exploding teams where it's like, you know, trigger several explosions and then like Punisher van goes off and then uh, clone shredder goes off. And so <laughs> my team just takes a ton of damage, but like their team survives enough to like win or something. I really enjoy things like that. And it doesn't have to be that extent. Sometimes it can just be like, yeah, I figured out I can, you know, copy the, uh, the Sinister Syndicate team ability with this guy who normally has a terrible attack value, but now suddenly he's like a big threat and he can do like this thing, uh, stuff like that. I really enjoy those, even if I like it just means that I'm completely and utterly destroyed at the end of like the game. It is fun sure. watching somebody else's like Rube Goldberg machine just take off and work. Chain reaction explosions, they are pretty hilarious. Uh, no, I I agree. That's my favorite way to play, too. Just go up, meet in the middle, and punch. That's my favorite way to play against somebody. That's my favorite way to play hero clicks. You know, uh, the annoying ways of, like, staying super far back and, like, ooh, just barely able to, yeah. to, to shoot you. And, oh, maybe I, I don't know. Well, what's, what's your charge range again? It's like, if you know, we're just playing, hanging out, whatever. Let's just get – let's none of this – this, that, and everything. Let's just get to business, all right? Let's start throwing hands. Let's start punching. Let's start rolling dice. Yeah, that's just, my, my least favorite. That's my is, favorite team to play in against. In a casual setting, people that will run their team away to heal back up or, like, do the TK yo-yo kind of technique where, like, they'll run and shot out and then TK back and they'll be like, oh, I just really don't want my team to get hurt. And it's like, there's nothing on the line. There's literally nothing on the line other than right. our enjoyment and so, like, if that's how you enjoy it, that's fine. But just realize you have ruined my night, and I'm going home sad, and I hate <laughs> this. I'm never coming back. 
no, but uh, yeah, I really don't. Uh, it's not as bad as like someone that barriers up and waits That's for me worst. to like That's essentially overextend. Because yeah, I've yeah I've played games where like the first thirty minutes are me just being like I don't have a taxi. I will have to take several turns to come to you, and they're like, "That's fine. I'm just going to keep barriering until you give me an opportunity to hit you." And in those like situations, I'm just like, "Man, this is like hero clicks distilled into the lamest form of hero clicks, where it's like zero engagement for the majority of the game. You kill one thing, and then time's called, and that is just awful. I, I hate That's playing fun. against things like that." But I've also adapted my play style over the years so that if I face something like that, I I have like an opportunity or I present myself with an opportunity to like overcome it. Um, but yeah, the personally, like if it's a casual night and I'm not like rocking a Molecule Man or like a Reed Richards, something that can get rid of barrier, and somebody's just like, ah, for fun, I think it's really interesting if I drop twenty squares of barrier, I'm like wow. That's a really weird definition of fun in a game where you're supposed to attack people. Yeah. Mm, yikes. Yikes. But I believe that is all our question. I don't think we have anything on Facebook or an email. So that is going to be our show for this week. I'm excited to get ready to get going for Gen Con and get my teams built and everything here and yeah. get heading down. I've got no teams to build, but I do have an entire set list to look through that we we never did a review <laughs> for, and I never really looked closely at because I didn't play in any sealed. So I'm I'm definitely going to be checking out, looking at what the the X Men X Men uh, Swords of Organized Play set looks like. But uh, yeah, again, if you guys are in Gen Con, send us a message. You'll be hearing this before we get there, but hopefully you were already planning on getting there if you're going to be going there uh we'll have some free time i'm pretty sure uh we're going to be doing some light event coverage so keep an eye on the facebook and the youtube for some like vlogs and some pictures and stuff like that uh but other than that yeah just have a have a good weekend regardless of your going to when whiz kids uh gen con whatever or not right yeah, and if, if you can't pick up the con exclusives from there, well, you're going to have to eBay or Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sorry. What, what yeah. a segue. Yeah, uh, that's that's basically the, the only options. Yeah. They don't, well, they don't sell them online. for you. Uh, <laughs> okay, Simeon. But if you want some of the things they do sell online, you can go to the WizKids store, which is at shop.wizkids.com, and you can use code... Dial H10 to save 10% off when you do. That'll work on most products, not Iconics or potentially uh, the Play at Home kits, and also definitely not Scott Porter's. Um, but an alternative, you could go to coolstuffinc.com. Occasionally they get some of these con exclusives, so you could potentially buy them from there. And if you're going there, you should use code Dial5 to save 5% off. It'll be a better deal than if you don't use it i mean usually so save yourself some money uh if you really want to save money just wait on the con exclusives that's my best advice but yeah check out notorious coming out we've seen most of the goons i believe which it seems like it's going to be a huge generic heavy set which i know me and calder always love so we're going to be buying heavy into it i suggest you buy heavy into it if the generics in the last couple of years have taught me anything, you can turn, you know, a dollar's worth of generics one day into seven dollars worth of generics the next day. So definitely yeah. check it out. It's going to be a great set, I think. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant dead pain humor. Over okay, six yeah, people. Learn. 